The Bridge of the Enterprise-D is one of the most iconic sets in Star Trek history. Between its debut in 1987 and its final use in 1994, it went through many visual tweaks. Many of these changes were due to alternate timeline episodes. If you want to see more info on that, what's wrong with you? That's covered in this video. The link is in the description. This following video will focus solely on the more noticeable changes made to the normal timeline bridge from its debut in Encounter at Farpoint all the way to its final appearance in Star Trek Generations. We'll go through them chronologically because it wouldn't make sense to do it any other way. This is the evolution of the Enterprise-D bridge. This is the baseline, the bridge as it appeared in the first episode. The key areas of focus in this video will be the aft consoles, the center command chairs, the forward con and op stations, the walls, and the wooden arch where some poor schmuck has to stand all day because Starfleet doesn't care if the person firing the torpedoes gets chronic lower back pain. Seriously, give this person a chair. Anyway, the changes to the bridge start immediately. In episode 2, overhead lights were added to the aft consoles since it was pretty dark back there in the first episode. A few episodes later, additional seats were added to each side of the center row. They look more like toddler booster seats. They were added to give guest stars a place to sit, and still no back chair for this person. Several episodes after that, these booster seats would be downgraded to simple cushions. And still no chair back here, unless it's made out of air or has a cloaking device. I don't know. In Season 2, the captain's flip-up armrest controls were replaced with these static panels. The small back wall area beneath the command chairs was also updated with the same red carpet found elsewhere around the bridge. This area was grey in Season 1. Those booster seats from Season 1 were replaced with these translucent shelves. It looks like they're plastic, but maybe they're transparent aluminum? Turning back to the wooden arch, its center support pedestal was updated with what looks like access panels, so that they could upgrade stuff, like RAM maybe? The arch was also changed to a lighter shade of wood. It was darker in Season 1. I didn't know if this set piece was actually wood or if it was just some cheesy 80s wood wallpaper, but I decided to get to the bottom of this. And like any psychotic weirdo would do, I pestered my Kukuda. He said that the arch was thin layers of wood laminated together and likely covered with some vinyl wood grain material. So there's a fun fact, depending on what your definition of fun is, weirdo. Up front at the ops and con stations, their seats were also swapped out. Their season one seats had a very reclined posture. And these new ones are much more upright. Additionally, Input bays were also added towards the bottom of the support pedestal. Below that, they added very slight platforms for both consoles. This probably allowed them to move these two stations more easily, since they were constantly adjusting their position depending on whatever camera angle they needed. Looking towards the side walls, those 80s wooden panels from Season 1 were replaced with these more modular looking access ports. Returning to the aft consoles, the L cars were refreshed. In fact, they were continually refreshing these throughout the entire series, with the latest upgrades and system patches. At one point, Starfleet even experiments with their next generation of computer operating system. Who needs L-Cars when you have L-Cards board? L-Cardboards. That's some Section 31 shit. From here on out, the bridge updates become less frequent, so let's keep going with Season 3. The carpet received two updates. First, the grey areas are now all connected. Prior to this, the grey portions of the carpet only went down the side ramps. The booster seats return, though they appear to be the smallest version used yet. Maybe they're designed for people like Hank Hill. Mr. Hill, you have no ass. When we get to Season 5, the ops and con chairs lose that gill pattern in favor of this normal smooth edge around the chairs. It's anyone's guess to why they would bother making such a minor update. And still no chair back here. The dedication plaque's location doesn't change over the course of the series, 
However, at some point, the dedication plaque receives this wooden frame. Because any dedication of the D's gotta have that wood. Because you know that D stands for D chair. Which, by the way, Worf still doesn't have. Jumping all the way to the series finale, All Good Things, the Season 1 bridge was recreated for the flashbacks. The forward console's reclining chairs are restored, and along the walls, the wood panels are back. However, a few things weren't perfectly recreated. The captain's armrest controls are still the ones they've been using for the past few seasons. As you recall, these original consoles were flip out. In the aft, the overhead lights remain. Again, these lights weren't there on the original version. Okay, so we're getting near the end. But we haven't finished the scan, sir. Here's where the most significant changes were made. Clearly, the Enterprise-D was vastly updated following the end of the TV series. The doorways now have this grill pattern shadow cast on them. Also, around the entire set, the lighting was heavily overhauled. The doorways also get these pipe handlebars. The center arch pedestal gets a new front. It has a raised, smoothed out look now. The center command area is also raised. It's about a step or two higher. This also raises the command chairs. This update was left over from the modifications made to the All Good Things bridge. So after the end of the TV series, they just left this for the movie. Along the walls, new stations were installed. It's similar to the yesterday's Enterprise modifications, but this one is more expansive with a total of three stations added to each side. Since this was a movie, maybe Starfleet could afford more bridge extras. One thing they still cheaped out on was the backrests. These stations just use stools. There's no back support or rails for protection. Starfleet must have also installed some direct link between these consoles and the ventral shields, because when they get hit here, this blows up. Speaking of things blowing up, no rocks. But this thing appears out of nowhere. I guess we've never noticed it hanging on the ceiling. Anyway, at least these people got seats. It's some pretty f***ed up shit that after all he's done, Worf still didn't get a chair. Wait, no. He did. So that's the video. I hope it lived down to your expectations. As always, I'd like to thank these apt consoles for helping support the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Yeah, watch pretty mama while I slay my cane. Long little chief.